Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but we want to give a shout out to our podcast partners, the Florida Coaches Coalition. We coach a global community of women in high school sports and Vital Signs Wall of Fame. You've heard me say before, these are four great organizations. You should add them to your network. See what they can do for you. And now, please stay with us. Don't hit that fast forward button. Take three and a half minutes. Take a listen to our sponsorship shout outs. These are products that I used as an AD or a coach. You should use them too. Here we go. We want to thank Gipper for their support of the podcast. Gipper is the official social media graphic solution for the Educational AD Podcast. Go to gipper.com. See how other athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channel. Mention you heard it on the podcast and you'll get 10% off. That's gipper.com, the official social media graphic solution for the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Join the 6 million users and turn your school into a Huddle school. Go to huddle.com. We believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. The tools that Huddle is going to provide your coaches, your teams, your student athletes are just fantastic. I used Huddle as a football coach for years, but when I became an athletic director, I made sure our school was a Huddle school. Change the way you see the game. Go to huddle.com and get started. We also want to thank Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and you're going to find an entire suite of platforms designed to help you do your job better. Snap Raise is their fundraising platform. We used it at our school with great success. Coaches loved it. Parents loved it. And it works. It has helped schools just like yours raise over $700 million. Uh, they even have a program where they'll give you your funding before you actually did your fundraiser. Nobody else does that. Go to snapraise.com. Get started today. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo to see their score tables and their scoreboards in action. Their products not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com. Schedule that live web demo today. We also want to thank our newest sponsor, District One. Go to District One, that's W O N dot com, for a better uniform experience. District One offers you fully custom premium uniforms with on time delivery. In 20 business days or less. You also can order one at a time replacement. So there's no need to ever replace an entire set of uniforms just when you need one or two. Stop dealing with late deliveries and poor quality. Go to district1.com. That's W O N on the back end and click team gear, the team gear button for your free quote. District1.com. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com and check out their great products. And when you're ready to order, use the link vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake to get a nice little discount. The Wall of Fame is an interactive touchscreen video console that's going to help you bring your school's legacy to life, showcasing your school's diverse history, your proudest moments, and your top role models. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're the trusted leader in digital ticketing, and they're going to show you how to set up and sell your tickets online for all of your events, not just athletics. But the best part, Hometown is going to provide you with a dedicated client success manager giving you hands-on support every step of the way. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com right now to get started. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. 
Hades usually only hear back from the complainers, that 2%. And we need to hear back from them. But you also need to hear back from the 98% that love and support your program. And that's where Athletic Surveys comes in. They're going to create a custom survey that allows you to take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. And that's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're meeting with that squeaky wheel parent or your school board or your principal. Go to athleticsurveys.com, get started today. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. Um, if you've never been to Hawaii, guess what? You're going today. Uh, our guest is Darren Ashiro. Darren's a certified master athletic administrator. He's the director of athletics at Hawaii Baptist Academy. Also has a pretty big national footprint. Uh, he's on the NIAAA board of directors. He's also a member of the uh, NADC advisory committee that uh, works every year to, to plan our NADC conference. Uh, Darren, uh, we set this up at the national conference, uh, so it's been a while, but uh, uh, welcome to the Educational AD Podcast. Thank you for having me, Jake. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you there, and uh, I'm glad we finally are getting getting to connect here. Well, we've had a couple of ADs from Hawaii um, on in the past, uh, but we're excited to hear your story, so let's go and jump right into it. We always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us a little bit of your background, where you were born, where you grew up, uh, maybe take us up through the high school and and the college years. Then we'll take our first break and then uh, hear more about your uh, early career. But what's the Darren Ashiro origin story? Well, I did try to uh, cover this in like 30 seconds in my speech at the conference. Uh, A little led to me going over a little bit, but. Uh, I actually was born in Texas. So I was born in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, when my dad was in seminary. Uh, my dad is originally from the Big Island, Hilo. Uh, my mom is from Kauai. Uh, but he was in seminary, and that's where where I was born. And um, he went into the ministry. He served at a church in Florida. So uh, my family lived for a little while in Florida uh, before we moved back home uh, to Hawaii. But pretty much... Raised in Hawaii the past uh, 53, 54 years, whatever. Um, but yeah, originally born in Texas. So that's my uh, excuse for rooting for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I suppose people do need an excuse to, to root for him. Sorry to all those Cowboy fans <laughs> out there. Okay. Well, what was it like, uh, you know, what was your youth experience like? Uh, did you do sports, uh, you know, as a kid in high school? You know, share that experience. Yeah, I played a little bit. Uh, I was never a great athlete. I uh, played basketball through my freshman year in high school. Uh, looking back on it, I probably would have enjoyed golfing. But, you know, back in the 80s, golf wasn't cool. It wasn't a cool sport, right? Um, but, yeah, just kind of dabbled. Uh, in sports, um, I, I'm actually a graduate of Hawaii Baptist Academy, so I've seen the school grow uh, for, for the past several decades. Um, went to college at the University of Hawaii uh, uh, here in Manoa, uh, and my degree is actually in secondary uh, education, uh, secondary health education, uh, specializing in PE. So uh, what, I, what I always... Uh, think is interesting is I was always into writing and I originally was going to go to school for journalism uh journalism or English be an English teacher um but I I moved over to health and PE um when I took an English literature class and I realized I wasn't passionate like the rest of my classmates about British literature so kind of had an epiphany and uh switched over uh, to health education and PE. So yeah, that's my educational, educational background. You know, I'm a little bit older than you. uh, And when you hear about, you know, let's say our profession nowadays, I I don't think, you know, health and and physical education are even offered as majors anymore. You know, now it's, it's exercise science or, you know, even they even have undergraduate degrees in athletic administration. What were some of the courses that you remember from your undergraduate days 
that you found really useful later on when you became an athletic director? Anything stick out for you? Well, yes, uh, we did. Uh, it's kind of an interesting course. It, we had a course called Tests and Measurements um, mm -hmm. with and, and another course, uh, Kinesiology, where yep. you learned a lot about the body and, and how the body moves. Um, my kinesiology professor, I remember at, at UH, um, was this Indian Indian gentleman, um, very knowledgeable, uh, wonderful instructor. Um, but I just remember him engaging us uh, and learning a lot from that class. Um, at that time, too, in the PE department at UH, there was a, a professor, uh, Dr. Kwok Ho. Um, a lot of these, uh, I didn't realize it going through at the time, but looking back on it, I actually had a lot of uh, professors in, in the physical education department and health that were on the tail end of their careers. Um, so they had uh, an abundance of experiences to, to share with us. Uh, they kind of had their pelts on the wall. They had won their awards. They had, they had uh, worked with Olympic athletes, professional athletes. Uh, their kids had had done great things in, in sports and in education. So I was really fortunate um, uh, to have the, uh, the professors that I did at, at UH. So looking back on it. Well, I, I remember those uh, two courses. We must have had a very similar curriculum at our colleges. And uh, I love that expression. They had their pelts hanging on the wall. Uh, yeah, I, I can still remember, you know, look, being in their offices and just seeing the awards and the plaques and everything and just thinking, geez, you know, am, am I ever going to be good enough to even closely, you know, uh, uh, approach that? Uh, boy, you brought back some great memories. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't want you to dive too deep into your career, but uh, as you were graduating, as you were nearing completion of that undergrad degree, you know, what were you thinking? Was it, uh, you know, teaching and coaching or, or what was your initial plan upon graduation? Well, that was exactly it, teaching and coaching. I, I was already involved in coaching uh, basketball, uh, started while I was in college and uh, wanted to teach and coach. And so that's what I ended up doing. I, I did come back to my alma mater here uh, and I taught and coached for nine years. Uh, overall, I coached for about 12 because I started in college and I continued one year into my um, tenure as athletic director. Um, but yeah, I taught and coached for nine years uh, here at HPA before I uh, moved over into athletic administration. Okay. Uh, for our listeners, uh, we're visiting today with Darren Ashiro. He's a certified master athletic administrator, also on the uh, NIAAA board. Uh, we're going to take our first break, but uh, when we come back, Darren's going to share a little bit more about his early career as a teacher and a coach and the steps that took him to uh, uh, the path that became an AD. So please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. All right. Hey, we want to say thanks to Gipper for their support of the podcast. Gipper is the official social media graphics solution for the Educational AD Podcast. If you go to gipper.com, you're going to see how athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channels. The kids are on social media today. So if you're not creating some great graphics featuring student athletes, your teams, your coaches, even yourself, you're really missing out. Go to Gipper.com and start creating custom content for your school's social media channel. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to Huddle.com change the way that you see the game. As a high school football coach, I used Huddle for years, and it was just fantastic. But when I became an athletic director, I made sure our school was a Huddle school. And our coaches just love the tools that they provided for us. You know, it allowed them to help their athletes, their teams, play at their very best. Go to Huddle.com and see why we believe in sports and teams believe in huddle. Join the 6 million users. Turn your school into a huddle school. Okay. Well, I, we really enjoy huddle. Uh, our school became a huddle school during the pandemic. Um, so not unlike a lot of schools in Hawaii where we all learned how to stream events. That was kind of the genesis of it. 
but now our basketball volleyball teams um they find it indispensable. So Mahalo to Huddle. Um glad to hear that they're a sponsor. Uh, we love Huddle here at HBA. <laughs> Wow. Thank you so much. I know our friends at Huddle really going to appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, again, I used it as a, as a coach and we use it as an AD. It really is, you know, very cool. Thank you for doing mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, for our listeners, uh, our guest today is Darren Oshiro. He's the athletic director at, uh, excuse me, Hawaii Baptist Academy. That's in Honolulu. Darren, uh, you kind of took us up through your college years and how you had made the decision to come back to your, your own high school. Um, how was that when you came back? I remember just one time I came back to substitute at my high school, uh, right after I got out of college and, uh, here's all my old coaches and many of my old teachers, they're looking and they're going, you became a teacher. Uh, and and so how was your experience coming back? It was a great experience. Uh, it was a little awkward. Uh, I can't lie. I mean, you know, there's, uh, we have some, um, teachers that had been here for for forever it seemed like you know and now yes. they're telling they're telling me to call them by their first name and I just absolutely can't you know it's Mrs. So-and-so and Mr. So-and-so and um yeah so it was it was a it was an interesting experience um but so supportive um we're, we're at a wonderful school and as the years have passed I'm kind of on the other end now where some of the uh, students that have come through our school are have come back to to teach and coach as well. So uh, it's interesting how all that's kind of gone full circle for me. Yeah, I, I I told somebody this the other day. I can't think of a, a more gratifying feeling to, than to have one of your former student athletes come back and want to coach uh, at your school. V- very cool stuff. Um, talk a little bit about how some of your early teaching and coaching prepared you to become an AD and, and how did that all happen? How did you become an athletic director? It's uh, my journey to becoming an athletic director is actually probably pretty unique because um, um, athletic administration is nothing that I aspired to uh, per se. I was very happy teaching and coaching, uh, but like uh, all of us, we go through life stages, right? Uh, when I started uh, coaching and, and, and teaching, I was single. Uh, and then over the years, um, got married, you know, then had child one, then had child two. Um, so perfectly happy teaching and coaching. The AD position opened up. I was actually asked to apply, and I, I politely declined. Very happy doing what I was doing. But um, the weekend of my daughter's first birthday, um, and she was sort of like a planned child, right? We wanted her, we're trying to get pregnant and, and, and ideally, uh, my wife would give birth during spring break or somewhere close and she could, she was a school teacher as well. So she could take off the fourth quarter, piggyback summer to that and come back in the fall. And so it worked out, right? We're like, wow, we got this thing down. The weekend of my daughter's first birthday, my wife gets sick. Turns out she's pregnant with her son. And he was a surprise. <laughs> so having exhausted her maternity leave already, we were just thinking, okay, what are we going to do? And literally two or three days later, um, our athletic director at that time was going to move his family back to Kansas. And he gave us that news. And that was the, the really the sole reason why I was open to moving over, just knowing that uh, with a change in position, I would get a little bit of, of a bump in pay and so we started to kind of pray about it and, and think about it and um that's kind of how i moved over to athletic administration um just felt like it was a door opening and um we we had the you know as a family we we're trying to figure out what we we're going to do and um the interesting thing is you know i always say god has a sense of humor <laughs> uh, my wife's the numbers person and she said uh, once you get to discussing salary, if the raise is going to be this amount, X amount, it's a sign. You need to take it. <laughs> uh, so when I got to that point, the the raise was going to be that exact amount. Nothing more, 
but just that exact amount that my wife had, had told me, uh, that round number. So um, we've, you know, had things like that happen uh, in both of our lives. And, and that's kind of how I matriculated over to, to athletic administration. <laughs> Interesting. So uh, there, there was no further negotiation once you saw that, uh, that line. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, that's, that's, it, it was a very modest raise, uh, but it's what my wife had said. This is what we would need, you know, for me to stay home uh, X number of months. And, and that's, that's how it happens. No, hey, then <laughs> ha happy wife, happy life. Uh, that's right. That's okay. right. Um, take our listeners through, um, you know, we all have it that first time we're an athletic director uh, and the expression, you don't know what you don't know uh, applies to just about everything. So what were some things that you didn't know that you found out? And what were some things that, um, you know, you found out you already knew, uh, you know, how was that you know, first year or two as an AD? I guess I wasn't, uh, I wasn't really prepared for the amount of paperwork. Um, so I started as an athletic director in 2000, the 2000, 2001 school year. Um, at that time we had a, a gym manager and myself, that was it. Um, after my first year, uh, I felt like I really need secretarial help, but I also felt like we really needed an athletic trainer. So uh, I chose to pursue the latter uh, to pursue an athletic trainer. And for the first time, we contracted services to an athletic training company back then. Uh, today, we have two full-time athletic trainers who are independent hires. They're, they're, they work for HBA. Uh, but back then, my choice was secretary or athletic trainer. I chose athletic trainer, and I just tried to get up to speed on on doing all the things that an administrative assistant, i.e. secretary, would do. Um, my uh, Our gym manager, who who is also, he's going to be, his position is going to be elevated uh, this summer to assistant athletic director. He helps me out with a lot of the paperwork, uh, eligibility and such. Uh, but I guess just all of the, the paperwork, all of the communicating um, was somewhat surprising. Um, so, you know, that's something that I had to really get adjusted to. Uh, and, and just just knowing that as an administrator, working with so many people, you realize that a lot of times um, somebody along the, the chain or the process of, of what needs to get done doesn't do their job and something falls through as an administrator, you still are responsible for that. So um, I think the one thing about teachers is, you know, teachers are the kings of their kingdom, right? They, 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 they rule their class and they set the rules and they put the students in their place. But just jumping into administration, just having to work with so many different people and knowing that a lot of times I'm going to have to just um, apologize, even though it wasn't specifically my fault, just kind of own it. Um, and just learning how to kind of navigate all of that. Um, that was kind of the biggest adjustment, I think, for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I share that with young ADs all the time and older ADs. It was a lesson that I learned very late in my career, too late, I think, uh, is the power of the apology. You know, you, you own it, mm -hmm. even if it's not your fault. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You know, it's not how we roll you know, and you move on and there's really not a lot of people can say, and I think they respect uh, and appreciate that apology, you know, great stuff. Right. Okay? Right. right. For our listeners, uh, our guest today is Darren Shiro. He's a certified master athletic administrator, also very active nationally. We're going to hear about that later on, but let's take another quick break. This is the educational AD podcast. We want to say thanks to snap mobile for their support. Go to snap raise.com that's snapraise.com check out the entire snap mobile suite of platforms including snap connect snap manage snap store and of course snap raise their fundraising platform we've used snap raise with great success and so can you uh, they've helped schools just like yours raise over 700 million dollars they even have a program where they're going to give you your money before you actually start your fundraiser. I don't think anybody else offers that. Go to snapraise.com and check out the entire platform. That's snapraise.com. 
We also want to thank Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule a live web demo, and see their tables and their boards in action. Probably one of the best purchases I ever made was our Sideline Interactive indoor score table. They not only raise money for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com. Schedule that live web demo today. Sidelineinteractive.com. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're visiting today with Darren Shiro, Certified Master Athletic Administrator from Hawaii. Darren, one of my favorite parts of the podcast is when our guests get to share some of the mentors that they've had during their life, during their career, none of us get to where we're at on our own. So who are some of the people that have helped you along the way? I think locally, uh, basically, uh, Hawaii Baptist Academy is part of the Interscholastic League of Honolulu, the ILH. Uh, all the, the, it's a league uh, completely comprised of uh, private schools uh, on the island. So I would say a lot of our longtime ILH athletic administrators, um, when I started in, in 2000, 2001, um, Jim Bukis, Carl Shores, John Hom, uh, Bill Villa, um, you know, guys that uh, had been around the block and kind of took me under their wing. Uh, one of the biggest pieces of advice is that I got, it was kind of a chorus from all of them was, um, not to be married to the job um that that if i'm not careful that um athletic administration can be consuming um and that i really need to prioritize uh my family so uh and and, and a couple of them shared out of um experiences that weren't necessarily the best you know like if they had to do it all over again they would they would go back and try to maybe reprioritize things in their lives uh, when they first became an administrator. So that was very uh, important for me um, starting out. Um, and I tried to kind of, um, you know, follow in their footsteps, and so to speak, you know, take that advice to heart. I think uh, regionally and nationally, Rich Barton, who's now um, working in an IAAA office um, as an assistant executive director, um, Rich is a longtime pillar in Section 7, um, serving for many years in Utah. He's a, NI, he's a past NIAAA president as well. Uh, but Rich has always been somebody that I've looked up to and who's um, shared a lot of um, uh, advice with me and, and, and just kind of also encouraged me to uh, serve and, and um, you know, uh, get more involved in the NIAAA. So, um, yeah, he was. He would be somebody that I would uh, point to on the on the regional and national level. So, but yeah, just collectively, um, just all of the many people um, that I've encountered through my career who um, just offered advice and just uh, invested in me, really invested in getting to know me and um, just kind of sharing uh, how they do their jobs and um, how they've overcome certain challenges. It's all been. Uh, very helpful to me through the years. You know, we talked earlier about, um, you know, how we both came back. Uh, you so much more uh, than I did uh, to our pr uh, previous high school uh, to work and teach. What are some things that you do with your coaches to help them become better mentors themselves of the student athletes they work with? Anything come to mind? One of the, it's kind of a general thing. But, uh, and I heard this when I was young in my coaching career, um, here and there, I just try to remind our coaches that it's it's easy to um, look at your players as, or look at the students as just players. Um, but especially for the coaches who have families, we try to remember, remind them that each player is is their mom and dad or their family um that's their most important thing in their lives you know uh that um 
they have a family and their parents look at uh, this girl or this guy that you look at as your basketball player or volleyball player or, or cross country runner, what have you. And you sometimes just look at them as, okay, how do I piece them into the lineup? Hey, they're not playing well. I need to get them going. Sometimes it can be frustrating just to work with them, but just to be reminded that that's somebody's child. Um, that's something that I've tried to kind of remind our coaches of. Obviously the, the coaches that have families, uh, some of them maybe even our grandparents, their their perspective is going to be a little different than maybe a young single coach fresh out of college. Um, so it's just kind of, um, you know, reminding them that it's, you know, a lot of the, and another thing you're just, that a lot of the teaching is going to take place in practice. Um, coaches love to coach games. They love strategy. Sometimes they, they, they look at it as a personal challenge, me versus you. Uh, I'm going to coach against so-and-so, but just to remember that it's, it's, it's all part of, uh, you know, educational athletics and so much can be taught um, even through struggles uh, or through situations where you don't win as much as you, you want to, uh, or you don't have the results that you're hoping for, uh, that a lot can be taught and a lot can be learned. So just kind of always trying to uh, remind our coaches about that. Yeah. And that's a great point. Um, you know, you know, as ADs, you know, we're not hiring the coaches to win games We're hiring them to coach kids. Okay. And then the kids, right. you know, if we do our job, you know, then they give us a chance to, uh, to win some of those games. Good stuff. Okay. Thanks for sharing that mm -hmm. for our listeners. Uh, we're visiting today with Darren Shiro, certified master athletic administrator. Also, uh, Got quite a footprint at the national level. We're going to hear about that in just a minute, but let's go and take another break. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to set up and sell tickets online for all of your events, not just athletics, but Things like school plays, concerts, uh, school dances, even graduation. And here's the best part. Every step of the way, you're going to be assigned a dedicated client success manager to provide you with hands-on support. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com right now and get started. Simple and easy online ticketing. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Darren, you shared a little bit earlier about how you got involved, you know, at your state level, but we have a lot of younger ADs, newer ADs that listen, and I think it's important for them to hear about the journey that, let's say, really old guys like me have taken and, you know, veteran ADs like you. Um, how did you get involved with the NIAAA initially? And talk about how that has led to your involvement now where you're on the National Board of Directors. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm approaching the end of uh, my 23rd year as a full-time athletic director. So I've been an NIAAA member most of those years. Um, started attending the conferences. Uh, I've been to every conference in person that's taken place since 2008. And uh, the, the, the running theme for me, and I, I touched on this at the, at the national conference when I had my three-minute speech, is that uh, everything was kind of based around my family. So my my first child was born in 99, my second in 2000. So 2008 was about the time where we, my wife and I felt we could leave them at home with grandma and grandpa. So traveled up to our first or my first conference in San Diego in 2008. And I've been going every year since. Um, fast forward to their high school careers. Um I knew I wanted to get involved and serve more, but I, I waited until my youngest graduated from high school. So I've only been involved in committees and, and now getting on the board and, and getting involved at the national level really the past um, three or four years. Um, my son graduated high school in 2019. My, my daughter graduated two years uh, prior to that. So once my youngest got out of school and didn't have any more games and activities. Um, that's when I started to um, to get more involved uh, 
uh, with the NIAAA. So uh, 2000, uh, 2020, I think it was, I started serving on the DEI committee. It was an ad hoc committee at first. Now it's a full standing committee. Um, in the fall of 2019 here, um, I was appointed to serve uh, our Hawaii Interscholastic Athletic Directors Association, Hayata, uh, as our president. So uh, all of that, again, started after my my two kids were, were done with high school. So although I'm a veteran AD and I'm in my mid-50s, I'm, I'm still relatively young in terms of serving at the uh, at the state and national level. Um, so, but it's been a joy. It, it's been, it's been um, great to get involved and, and to meet everyone. And um, my first section seven meeting was 2022. Uh, and that's when I was nominated to run this past December for the at-large position. And because of the rotation, um, um, basically each board position is a three-year term. Um, and states rotate being able to put somebody on. So depending on your section, so for instance, section seven is comprised of Hawaii, California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. So five states. So basically, you know, if you wanna get involved at the board board level, you know, your state only has um, once every 15 years the opportunity to put somebody on. So at my age, I was like, well, it's not going to come around again. Hopefully I'll be retired by then. So when the opportunity to run it for the at-large position came up, I, I I took it just knowing that, hey, if elected, it'd, it'd be something that I would want to do. Uh, it'd be a place I'd want to serve. So that's kind of been my short, but relatively um, my short, quick journey, if you will, uh, at the national level. And again, you bring up a great point about some of those national positions. There is a timing factor involved, you know, with the rotation. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Also, uh, you know, again, you, you've got um, obviously many, many years of uh, productive uh, athletic administration left in you. I didn't get involved with my state association until I was 50 years old. I was a, a head football coach and an athletic director, probably in that order too much. Uh, but when I first became aware of, uh, our state association, um, I mean, it was instantaneous. I, it was like drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, I got involved a couple of years later, went to my first national conference and was able to much like you, you know, taking advantage of those invitations and also volunteering to serve on different committees and things like that. You get out there, you get noticed. And then, oh, by the way, we'd like you to, you know, get on our board. We'd like you to um, you know, run as president of our state association. You know, those things don't happen unless you make that choice to get involved. So young ADs out there or old ADs like me, uh, you know, get involved, you know, make that decision and, uh, you know, good things are going to come your way. For our listeners, uh, once again, our guest is Darren Shiro, certified master athletic administrator and director of athletics at Hawaii Baptist Academy in Honolulu. We're going we're gonna to take another break, but we're coming back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. You doing okay for time? Yeah. Hey, we want to thank a new sponsor, District One. That's W-O-N. Go to districtone.com. You're going to feel like you've won because District One offers you fully custom-made premium uniforms. They also have on-time delivery in 20 business days or less. And get this, you can order one at a time replacements. You'll never have to replace a full set of uniforms again when you just want to order one or two pieces. Stop dealing with late deliveries and go to district1.com. Once again, that's W-O-N, district1.com. Hit the team gear button and get your free quote, district1.com. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Science. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. The Wall of Fame is actually a interactive touchscreen video console that's going to highlight your school's and your athletes' proudest moments, both past and present. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their great products. And when you're ready to order, use the link vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake, and you'll get a nice discount. 
Vital Signs Wall of Fame. Bring your school's legacy to life. Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Darren, um, one of the things we try to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So I'm going to put you on the spot. What are some things that you do at Hawaii Baptist Academy that you're particularly proud of that uh, you can share with our listeners as best practices? I think the overarching thing for, for our program, and it's nothing that I can take credit for. It's, it's what I stepped into. Um, our school has always been known to, to try to do things the right way, if you will. Um, I like to say we, we, we compete with integrity. So, um, you know, in this day and age where everyone's looking for an edge um, and, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you're from, there's always issues with um, uh, students transferring school to school for athletic purposes or students getting recruited uh, from one part of your state to another or um, all with the with the goal of, being more competitive and whatnot. Hawaii is not immune to that. Um, but what we've always tried to do at HBA is just try to, you know, instill in our school community that we're, we're going to, we're going to compete with integrity. So uh, it might mean that we don't win maybe as some of these other schools that choose a different path, but, you know, we can put our head down on the pillow not, at night and, and know that, um, you know, whatever we've done, we, we've done organically um, in terms of, of, of building a program or having a team grow and, and move from point A to, um, you know, to a point where they're successful and, and they win. Um, so kind of like I, I had mentioned earlier about focusing on, on the educational aspect of, of, of athletics, I think in general, we're kind of known, uh, and and probably so for for being um, one of those schools that really tries to adhere to both the letter and the spirit of of, of rules. Um, you know, regarding rules that I, I guess are in place just to kind of keep the playing field level. Um, so that's that's a big thing for us, and and of course, as a school, our our Christian mission. We've always tried to, in whatever ways we can, have that filtered down into all of our programs, uh, including athletics. So um, just trying to be good sports, uh, be a good witness when we're out there um, on the sideline or in the gyms or on the fields. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty proud of that reputation, and we just try to um, uphold that, you know, when I have my parent meetings at the beginning of every year, I, I kind of uh, tell my parents there's some positive peer pressure. So don't ruin it for all of the uh, others. Uh, you know, if you're that parent that gets really emotional and tries to coach your child from the sideline or you like to critique officials <laughs> uh, verbally, just know that we, we have a reputation of having really supportive uh, parents and, and in general, you know, great fan behavior. So um, take yourself out of the gym or, or maybe elbow your, your friend, tell them to cool off a little bit. So just try to kind of have that culture here. Uh, and, and again, it, especially coming back from COVID, we, I think a lot of us uh, across the country witnessed how parents and kids and coaches quickly went from we're just thankful to be playing to all the competitive stuff again where some of the uh, behavioral issues and, and sportsmanship issues uh, have kind of come back at a lot of events. And so, um, you know, we try to hang our hat on, on all those things. Um, super proud of that. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, and uh, I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot a second time. Um, you know, I still referee uh, high school basketball games. I work as a, a track and field official for high school and college. Uh, so sportsmanship something that gets discussed quite a bit. And I will be the first to admit, 
as a head football coach and even as a junior high basketball coach way back in the day, I was not always the best example of what we like to call great sportsmanship, forget good sportsmanship. So here's my question for you as an AD. Um, where do you draw your line in the sand for your coaches? Here's my example. Um, it, it, it's, it's fairly common for basketball coaches during the game. You know, hey, you missed that. Hey, that was a foul. You know, that's traveling. Come on, you got to call that both ways. Uh, oh, you're killing us. Or, you know, even worse, throwing hands up in the air, et cetera. So as an athletic director, and again, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, where's your line in the sand? I would tell our coaches, I hired you to coach the kids, not critique the refs. If there's a problem with the ref, you tell me, I'll make sure it gets handled with their commissioner. I want you coaching the kids. Um, and I'm not trying to, you know, paint myself in a good light either as an ad but uh, i i asked you the question what is your line in the sand for that type of thing uh, i you know uh that's a good question i've never been asked that I, I don't know if there's a line in the sand uh per se in terms of these behaviors are acceptable but if you do this these behaviors right. that's completely unacceptable I, I i guess you know and we have this in our coach's handbook uh uh, what I've tried to convince our coach or, you know, basically teach our coaches, remind our coaches is there's a lot of ways to be successful, you know, to get your teams to perform. And of course, in the old days, a lot of, there was a lot of yelling and a lot of, I mean, we, we've all seen the story, uh, heard the stories of football coaches that withheld water, you know, or whatever, right. Made kids run until they threw up um, things that just wouldn't fly today. Um, and they can get to their teams and their players to a point where they perform, but at, but at what cost? So I, I'm a firm, firm believer that um, being a, an encourager and being a positive coach where the players, especially uh, I've, I've seen a lot where um, let's say there's a male coach coaching a female sport, just getting, just getting the, the players to really feel like you believe in them, um, that uh, you have their back no matter what. Uh, I, I really believe that they can achieve at the same level, you know, and that you can be successful that way too. Um, so just kind of a different way to approach things, you know, have having students uh, feel like they have the freedom to compete and they're not going to be uh, judged uh, that their whole self-worth and identity isn't in how they perform. I think sometimes for them can can take some of the anxiety away. Um, but to play uh, for fear of what the coach is going to say or do, um, you know, so whatever that, that behavior looks like, whether it's uh, a wor words they choose or their facial expression uh, or how they, they might carry on in the public eye at a game, um, those are things that uh, we definitely try to discourage. Um, I, I really think that a lot of the learning happens in practice, and that's when you can be your hardest on the, on the players. And then in the game, you're kind of their cheerleader. You know, you're making adjustments, of course, but um, you know, you're trying to encourage and and you know, we remind our coaches that they're they're in the public eye. You know, they're going to be a lot of people will make judgments on our school based on how our teams behave and comport themselves at events, you know? So um, just all those um, reminders and all those, you know, bits and pieces of, of advice, I think go a long way to, to kind of building all of that. Yeah. Again, you're absolutely right. It, it's an ongoing process. You know, there's probably a lot of little reminders, uh, you know, to help our coaches, you know, and ourselves, you know, become the best right. that we can be. Yeah. Very, very much appreciate you sharing that. Well, Darren, this has been cool spending a little bit of time with you. Um, I wish I was uh, hanging out in your background there for our listeners. Uh, Darren's got a great Hawaiian beach, sunset, palm trees. You can almost hear the ocean and the uh, and the breeze but uh we're not done yet Darren. 
Uh, we always wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. Now, you certainly know your way around the world of athletics, but um, we're going to take our final break. And when we come back, I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job. But I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. So let's take that break. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Darren Ashiro puts into his new athletic director toolbox. We'll be right back. We want to thank Athletic Surveys for sponsoring the AD Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. Athletic directors typically only get to hear back from the complainers, that 2%, uh, and we need to hear back from them, but we also need to hear from the 98% that really love and support our program. And that's where Athletic Surveys comes in. They can create a custom survey for your school and let you take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. And that's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're talking to that frustrated parent or maybe your school board or your principal. Go to athleticsurveys.com. Let them show you what they can do. That's athleticsurveys.com. Check them out today. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We've been visiting today with Darren Ashiro. He's a certified master athletic administrator. He's the director of athletics at Hawaii Baptist Academy. Also a member of the, excuse me, NIAAA board of directors and the NADC advisory committee. Certainly knows his way around the world of athletics, but right now I'm going to challenge him to send out a brand new AD on their very first job, but I'm only going to let him put three things in the toolbox. Darren, you've had a little bit of time to reflect on this. What three items are going to go into your athletic director toolbox? I'll, I'll be honest. This was a challenge. I've only been thinking about it for a few minutes here. Um, so these aren't uh, necessarily concrete uh, things. These are kind of more uh, philosophical things or more abstract things, but I guess for for a new athletic director, uh, somebody just starting on their journey in athletic administration, I would say just to remember that it's not about you uh, or it's not about me. You know, it's um, it's 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 easy when you're getting started to uh, kind of look look inward, uh, kind of be self absorbed, and and try to get things going, set things up the way you want to. But I guess I would, I would tell the new administrator that's not about you. Just reminder that you're 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 serving others. You're you're an advocate for your your players, your families, uh, your school community. Um, so um, we all have egos, like we mentioned earlier. But just to kind of keep the ego in check and make, make sure that you remember it's it's not about you. So don't be a, a me guy. <laughs> um, the second thing I would say is. Um, you have to have an abundance of patience. So just from every interaction with, with folks that um, you deal with on a daily basis, to the uh, high maintenance parent, um, to the child that, that's hard to, uh, to work with, uh, to a coach that maybe doesn't seem to get it, just having a lot of patience uh, in, in, in everything that you're, you're doing on the job, um, if you're not a patient person, um, it's probably not the profession for you. So, and, and patient shouldn't be mistaken for um, not getting things done and and being apathetic and not um, goal oriented. But in the midst of, of of pursuing excellence and working hard, um, you can do you can do all of that while being patient. So I would say patience is a big one. And then the last one I would say would be. It, it kind of sounds a little um, cliche, but just loving well, um, knowing that not everybody's likable. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that come into your path in your jobs that you just don't like or that they're difficult to work with, but you can still um, love them and treat them in a kind way. Um, I, I really feel like true serving leadership um, is only attainable through through truly loving others and and leading leading well. So um, I think 
once you kind of get over yourself, kind of going back to the first one, realizing it's not about you, that um, you're called to work with everybody uh, at your school, on your campus, in your building. Um, then you take that approach and, and, and realize that, um, you know, everyone's important, everyone has value, and, and you're going to just love them all and serve them well. So I guess those three things, um, yeah, that would be kind of like my little talk to the new or the young athletic administrator. <laughs> No, all great ideas uh, for veteran ADs or for brand new ADs. Uh, Darren, we should have done this earlier, so shame on me for not doing it. Um, if one of our listeners wants to reach out, pick your brain a little bit more, find out how you do things there at Hawaii Baptist Academy, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? Uh, my uh, email address is D O S H I R O at hba.net h is in harry b is in boy a is in apple dot net um email is probably the best way um and i'd be happy to um start that dialogue maybe have a phone conversation also um always happy to or what we call in hawaii uh, always happy to talk story we, we like to say uh with folks so um and, and just you know Realizing that that there's no, nothing that's uh, too small, or what we say in Hawaii, manini, that anything that we think might be just a small thing, if, if it's if it's something that's on on your mind and you want to um, ask about it, by all means, just contact me and and be happy to to talk with you folks. Okay. Well, again, we appreciate you sharing with us today. Um, congratulations on uh, you know that move to the NIAAA board. Uh, looking forward to having you come to Florida in December for the uh, NADC. And I believe you were quoted as saying that one of your goals is to bring the uh, the national conference to Hawaii. Is that still uh, in the planning stages? I believe I followed that with just kidding. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Uh, I did use that for, for, uh, you know, uh, for some effect there, it was, it was pretty funny. Um, in in all seriousness, I think I think we've actually, or the NIAAA actually has looked at it in the past. I think the non-starter, um, in all seriousness, is you know wouldn't be possible to bring all the vendors over. Uh, so it's kind of like pie in the sky. Uh, I think it was decided long before me, um, but. It, it, we did have a laugh about that, um, talking about that. Um, so it, there's no doubt if we, if we somehow had it here, people would find their way over. Oh, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guarantee you those vendors uh, would find a way to, uh, uh, to make it over. Okay. Well, hopefully it's if it's a once in a lifetime event, it's going to happen uh, during uh, our lifetimes. Uh, you know, we can be a part of that. So, Darren, thanks so much for sharing today and all the best uh, moving forward. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks again for having me. For our listeners, uh, we do this just about every day, and then we upload the Zoom recordings to the Educational Lady Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening. Come back next time for more great interviews and content on the Educational Lady Podcast. We'll see you next time.